men means uh, it's a medicine so c is uh, astrology and uh, kang is institute uh, like tibetan medicine it's more of holistic in nature we always connect mind with the body western and tibetan medicine is completely opposite i'm the first one who introduced these tibetan medicines to the myso people right now is the right time to change Welcome to Philos Media Presents Sadagara Hadiyali Special Program. I am Naun Seba, student of postgraduate in Journalism and Mass Communication, San Filomena's College. Today we are happy to have the presence of renowned Tibetan herbal Dr. Srinivasan in our show. Welcome to our show, ma'am. Thank you. Dr. Srinivasan is a specialist in Tibetan medicine, which elevates illness and promotes health through herbal medicine. At present, Dr. Srinivasan is working as Chief Medical Officer at Mysore Branch Tibetan Medical Center. I welcome you to our show, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, how you got inspiration to pursue as a doctor? Okay, so uh, regarding my ins inspiration, so I pursued doctor because my elder brother is a doctor, and uh, my father, who is. Uh, very spiritual in nature he used to tell me that you know uh, kind of uh, he had taught me kindness and uh, being compassion towards every sentient being since from my childhood and i have that uh, always support from him in being a doctor yes okay ma'am uh, can you tell me briefly about uh, mensikam so mensikam is uh, men means uh, it's a medicine So C is uh, astrology and uh, Kang is institute. So this is the Tibetan Medical and Astro Institute of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, which was first established in 1960 in Lhasa and then re-established in 1961 in India. And now it's over 100 years we have been uh, practicing this Tibetan medicine for over 100 years. So uh, in India, there are overall uh, more than 60 branches mentioned yes. here in yes. uh, India. So, mm. uh, in, for Mysore, it uh, which number it will come under? Mensikam have now 64 branches all over India, uh, but this is the 64th branch. Oh. Like this is the uh, recent, you know, we have inaugurated this clinic in August uh, 2021. How does your fan uh, your family feel about your success learning this uh, my parents and families are very much proud of where i am they felt that you know it's a very noble work uh, being a doctor uh, changing the lives of so many patients and uh, their well being and everything i take of i take care of every day so uh, this is something they are very proud of and they always supports my uh, every work I do. Yes. So, what is uh, the biggest challenge you have faced in reaching success you have uh, achieved? Challenges. There are several challenges. Challenges when we uh, when we go for the uh, when we go for success uh, when we go for something uh, we strive uh, to go for your goal. I think for me, biggest challenge is when I started working as a doctor. Uh, I have dealt with a lot of uh, dreadful diseases like cancer and uh, very painful diseases I have gone through. And that time, mostly I'm emotionally invested with them. So, which is the biggest challenge for me? And then later, when I practice for many years, then I know how to have my own personal space. So, uh, I should say that was my biggest challenges in reaching here. Uh, now, coming. Under the Tibetan medicine, what are the major difference between uh, Western and Tibetan medicine? So, uh, Western and Tibetan medicine is completely opposite, I should say. And uh, Western medicines, uh, uh, like Tibetan medicine, it's more of holistic in nature. Like when we pay, when we see the patients with the skin problem, we basically uh, try to find out uh, what's the real cause of the disease. we don't directly touch the skin of patient and give lotion or something like that first we try to know like uh, where the disease comes from it, it either can be the toxic in the body or it either can be because of a in 
a kind of improper digestion or improper lifestyle also. So we try to find out what causes this problem and then we rectify that. Uh, I think that part it's very different in holistic in nature. And secondly, um, uh, this medicine is very much healing. Like, you know, we always connect mind with the body. So for us, it's very important to connect mind with the body. If you are not stable in the mind, naturally it affects, it, it impacts your sleep and the body in general. Yes. So there are many uh, Tibetan herbal medicine. So uh, what kind of disease can be treated with Tibetan medicine? Um, I think there are every diseases. Like, you know, uh, when we uh, see the patients, uh, I try to, I never ask the patients to leave the clinic uh, because I can't treat you. I never did that. In my practice of uh, almost eight years now, I have seen every patient from uh, toes to nails and you know, from every big cancer patients also, every small like cold, cough and minimal like, you know, even the nails also I have treated, you know, I have, uh, I think, you know, we have, uh, uh, we are always thinking about the wellness of the patient. So in general, we try to treat every diseases, including uh, indigestion problem, uh, including cardio problems, and uh, uh, any skin problems, any even hair fall also, cold, common cold also. And during COVID-19 also, we have provided a lot of medicines also. So I think uh, we can uh, we treat all the diseases. As you have mentioned, there are a few patients who have cancer. Yes. So, uh, is there any, uh, can cancer be cured with Tibetan medicine? So cancer is something, you know, even in allopathic also, wherever you go, there is no guaranteeing the uh, situations, even with the normal disease also. You can't guarantee the wellness of the patient. But, you know, uh, from here also, uh, I think, you know, when we treat the cancer patients, there are a lot of people, you know, who can't afford the process of cancer treatment. And, you know, there are a lot of people who don't want to go through the process. So basically, when they come to us, you know, we try to give medicines. And yeah, there are many patients. While I was working in Chennai, there are many patients in the cities who have been, you know, uh, uh, kind of taking Tibetan medicine for many years. Yeah, definitely. As you have treated many patients, uh, what is the common disease that you have treated here in Mysore? Most? In Mysore, which I have practiced for now six months. So in Mysore, I've seen a lot of digestion problem and uh, digestion related, like, you know, uh, piles also. Diabetes. Uh, diabetes, yeah, di diabetes, arthritis, uh, which is very common. And now recently that uh, COVID uh, patients uh, also, we have given medicines also. And uh, there are plenty like all the joint pain, joint problems, skin problems, uh, back pain, spondylitis, everything. Yes, we have seen. Uh, as uh, you have so many experience during those past year, so uh, how is your professional experience uh, in Mysore? In Mysore. So yeah, definitely I should say uh, when I bring this, uh, I'm the first one who brought uh, who introduced these Tibetan medicines to the Mysore people. So I think it's my privilege that I have that opportunity. And uh, uh, while uh, going through all the patients in Mysore, yeah, definitely they feel easier because now we have come to Mysore. Before they are going to Gurpura, Bangalore also, everywhere to get the medicine. Bailkupa also, they are uh, traveling uh, to Bailkupa for the medicines. Now we are here means that they feel much easier and also I also, you know, uh, promise that I take care of their well-being uh, of the patients. Uh, by I think uh, many patients in the city will come to know about the medicines means I'm really, I have that opportunity to treat a lot of patients, yeah. Yes. As you have mentioned, there are many branches, uh, more than 64 branches um, of Menzikang here in India. Uh, where does Menzikang stand in international platform? Yeah, um, so Menzikang has come a long way since from uh, 1961. I think once uh, when we started this medicine, uh, we have only few branches in Tibetan settlement. And now we have a, mostly in India, everywhere we have the city, uh, we have branches all over India. And uh, 
uh, in India, it was recognized in 19, uh, in 2017 in Ayush, like we have Ayush family, uh, Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, Sovareka is also there now, mm -hmm. Yunani, everything is there. So in this, uh, Tibetan medicine is also recognized. And uh, in, like we have, uh, as you told, you know, there are 64 branches. Now still we are moving forward with that. Yeah, internationally, I think uh, yeah, now we have a lot of people from Mongolian, Russian people, uh, and a lot of uh, from uh, foreign countries who is taking Tibetan medicine right now. So Mensikang have a very long history back in 1960 till 2022. Yes. Uh, so how Mensikang has uh, has changed over the decades? Yeah, so as I uh, told you, like, you know, when we started, it was just a few branch. Now we have 64 branches all over India. And uh, in India itself, you know, uh, there are lots of clinics who is sponsored by Indian people. So that's a big thing. Uh, like, you know, in Kerala, it was sponsored by Friends of Tibet. And, uh, mm, and uh, in Kalaburgi recently, in the memory of uh, one son, uh, that. Uh, th I think it's uh, Alama Prabhu, yes, he have uh, sponsored that uh, Kerala branch clinic and uh, Bhubaneswar branch clinic which was uh, before, you know, it was provided free for rent by uh, Biju Patnaik, that CM of uh, um, Orissa that time. Yes, uh, so we have been uh, provided every facilities uh, by Indian people, yeah, for that itself I'm feeling very grateful and we are still, you know, they are still continuing support our system. So how uh, Mensikang has brought changes in both Tibetan and Indian society? So Mensikang uh, is a system which takes care of your well-being. Okay. So in that case, yeah, uh, in Tibetan society, every almost like 80% of Tibetans are into Tibetan medicines. They are taking uh, Tibetan medicine for their digestion, regular digestion system and everything. And we are providing free of course for all the Tibetans who is above 60 years old. So they are all into Tibetan medicine. And because of that, I think many diseases are kind of a precaution they are taking. So many diseases are stopped because of that. And in India also, now that people know, who knows about Tibetan medicine, there are plenty who have not, uh, who have gone for every treatment and they have not got the solution and now taking Tibetan medicine and um, there are, uh, I think, uh, numerous people who have uh, write, uh, wrote uh, testimonials in our website also that they have experienced special uh, wellness in their kind of, uh, their lifestyle also changes because of the Tibetan medicine and that itself has connected a lot with Indian people and Tibetan people, yeah. As you being a doctor, if if anybody wants to be a good doctor, what quality or personality do you think is required to achieve it? So, uh, being a good doctor, uh, we have always uh, learned that you know, in our uh, when I was uh, when I was learning the Tibetan medicine, that time we have uh, one whole chapter regarding how to uh, how being a good doctor is important and what is good doctor for us. Mm -hmm. So I follow that and I agree that kind of 100%. So basically in our excerpt, like, you know, we have a saying that, you know, you need London Samba Karwata, Thamzik Nation Napa Sova Chawa, Leji Michi Kenatu. So there are six qualities which is needed, like uh, being a good doctor. Uh, first is, you know, um, being intelligent, stable mm -hmm. mind, uh, discerning mind, very uh, intelligent mind, so that is very important, first thing, and being compassionate. I think I can, uh, like being a doctor itself is not enough for me. I think being compassionate is very important. Like we, we should not be biased among people, like we should not be biased towards uh, good or evil, and black and white, and we should not be treating anyone uh, with difference. So for us, being compassion and uh, seeing patients as our own, uh, treating them as our own is very important, being compassion and uh, being skillful, which you know, uh, when you perform with the patients, we should be always skillful in nature, like even with our uh, hand in performing uh, massage and everything, and even uh, skillful in uh, body, speech and mind. 
in three of those like you know even in speech when you talk it should uh, relax the patients it should heal itself you know you shouldn't be so rude so that thing is very important and mentally you should be very calm as a doctor so like that you know we have six like we should be proficient in social ethics also so there are uh, certain things like uh, which is very important for us being diligent also diligent committed uh, so these are six things I feel which is most important being a being a good doctor. Yes. So as we know, this pandemic has brought us so many problems, struggles. So being a doctor, what you want to advise to the viewers or to the youngsters? So this, this pandemic, I think it's a beginning. Like you know, many of these pandemic will come again and again. When we see the, uh, when we see our surroundings also, we are not taking responsibility. We are taking only uh, our, even you know, for our, for your own sake also, we are not doing enough. Like we are skipping our food and everything uh, for our work also, for our wealth also. We are not doing enough. We have no sleep. Uh, we have sleepless night because of the work. So these kind of thing we have problem. And even in our environment also. Who does the responsible? Who have the responsibility in keeping it clean? Nobody has. We put all the garbage in other other areas, but we try to keep our site clean. And like that, it's a small example, but we uh, try to uh, uh, destroying the nature every day. We are destroying the nature. So I think you know, pandemic. This pandemic will come again and again until we take our own responsibility uh, of uh, being a. Uh, you know, kind of, of being a human being in this earth you know if you want to save this I think you need to first you know kind of save yourself first and to do what is right and what is wrong like we should not be um, destroying nature we should not be destroying your own health in the process of earning more and more and more yeah I think so, so uh, if not a doctor uh, what would you have become uh, if there is any your, your interest in different field so uh, if I am not a doctor if in case I am not a no I'm not a doctor I would be uh, liking to be in psychologist I would be some uh, influencer uh, I would be someone who uh, who have directly linked with the patients and who have directly you know uh, linked with the, uh, every people or animals or anywhere which you know uh, I can able to help them whichever uh, profession I am in yes okay. what dream is uh, yet to achieve uh, so uh, dream uh, I have uh, I think uh, right now I'm pursuing Tibetan medicines I have pursued that and uh, spiritually I'm more interested in that so I want to uh, pursue spiritually also and you know uh, uh, I want to be more kind of a uh, uh, perfectionist in my own field, yes. So, uh, what's, uh, what is your message for the next generation or those uh, who are youngsters? I think uh, youngster and uh, the next generation right now is the foundation of how you want to become in future. Uh, like uh, uh, right now we see a lot of uh, diseases which can't be cured also. Uh, we see a lot of problems uh, facing by the people. I think everything depends on right now. Uh, like you know how you change, how you bring change in the future. That is now only. So uh, right now is the uh, right time to change. So for the youngster I, I can only tell them to just be kind of uh, uh, strict with your own lifestyle and uh, use it carefully and uh, um, I think you know even in food also uh, lifestyle also uh, diet everything so you need to be more kind of uh, careful about what you take inside and uh, what you do and uh, sleeping to be uh, sleep and uh, food I think for me it's a very big kind of uh, uh, big thing that you know uh, everyone should follow it correctly yes Please, uh, can you say some concluding remarks uh, for this video? Uh, so concluding remarks uh, I should say I think there are plenty of words uh, which I always think of like uh, I think uh, 
we have to always take care of our own uh, well-being. Uh, for me, as a doctor, I always tell my patients that don't wait for something to be so big that you can't able to uh, control even the diseases also. There are some patients which we can't treat because uh, they just ignore it. So that's the biggest uh, thing that uh, people have. Like uh, they don't take food uh, at correct time. Uh, they skip morning breakfast. They sleep late. Uh, they would want to uh, see the screen 24 hours. I think, you know, that um, disease are like, you know, it slowly accumulates. And until, you know, it doesn't burst out, it won't cause any trouble. So, you know, we wait until uh, it uh, makes some impact in your lifestyle. Once, you know, it started hurting, once it starts uh, paining, make you painful, uh, then only we kind of are concerned about that, uh, um, concerned about that situations. So I think should be more kind of uh, more careful and more um, careful about what you do. Yes. Thanks a lot, Dr. Trinidina, for your valued time and sharing your personal experience with us. I hope this episode helps to know more about Tibetan Medical Institute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.